I think before we dive into this taboo conversation, let's talk about why sex is important. Um, aside from the obvious uh, biological nature of reproduction, right? We need to actually replicate and make new babies to propagate the species. That's a pretty important concept. But how can healthy sex life benefit you today in your life, in your health? So what we're looking at here are some of the well-known and well-studied benefits to actually having regular sex. So number one is lower blood pressure. There are a number of different hormones that are released during sex that can have longer lasting, not just short-term effects on blood pressure, but long lasting impacts and effects. Improved cognition or ability to think, clearer cognition, improved immune function, decreased depression, dec decreased anxiety, an increase in libido, again, healthy libido is healthy for you. Pain relief, this, which is a very interesting one. It's, it's been a number of studies in the pain journals on those that have more frequent sex have a tendency toward less pain and is also those with less pain want to have sex more frequently, right? So it's kind of a back and forth there. And then improved sleep, reduced overall perception of stress and improved heart health. So these are some fantastic benefits that anyone would want to take advantage of, benefits to having sex. Now, beyond the benefits of sex, let's talk about how gluten, because we're going to get more into than just gluten, but let's talk about how gluten can impact your sex life. There's a couple of major studies that have been coming out here in the literature and in, in the medical research in the last few years. And some of the things that we're finding about how gluten can impact sex are, are quite devastating, really, when you think about them. So let's look, ladies, let's look at, at what we know. So number one, gluten can cause sexual dysfunction in and of itself. And that how does that manifest? It manifests as low desire, right? So the lack of, of desire for sex, arousal disorders, lubrication disorders, so vaginal dryness, um, which can lead to friction and pain, right? Inability to have an orgasm, as well as sexual pain during intercourse itself. So these have all been reported recently in women with gluten issues. And so again, gluten, this is before going gluten-free. These are major symptoms or major side effects that gluten is causing women to have during sex or in, in, in sexual encounters. Now for men, it's somewhat similar, a little bit different. We can see one, and some of these, and I point out this one here, this gonadal atrophy, this occurs pre-puberty, right? So this is not even like an adult male. But the way I want you to think of this is that if, you're, if you have a child and your child is not gluten-free and you're trying to raise a healthy young man, one of the things that we know, especially in the celiac disease community, is that puberty can actually be delayed. Think of gluten as a, as a puberty blocking drug, if you will. And think of your young son trying to mature and trying to develop. And so gonad atrophy is a symptom, an early onset symptom, pre-puberty of gluten exposure. We know that gluten can also directly impact semen quality. It, it's been shown to cause both a lower quantity of semen production by men, but also poor motility, meaning semen that don't swim very strong, don't swim very well. So it can affect both quantity and quality of a man's semen. It can affect the potency of a man's erection, so impotence and, or lack of ability to maintain or sustain an erection. It can cause decreased sexual activity and loss of libido, loss of drive or desire. So again, these are symptoms in adult, except for this first one, these are symptoms in adult men, these are symptoms in adult females. Now, that being said, let's throw this up on the board. I wanna show you a couple of research studies again that have come out here. So you can see here, this was published, and this is not new, this was actually published in 1994, but there's now substantial, this was 1994, so again, going back almost 20 years ago, substantial evidence that celiac sprue is associated with infertility. So it's not just sex and sexual pleasure, but also fertility, the ability to bear children. If we look at fertility rates in the United States, especially, or other industrialized countries, fertility rates are dramatically dropping, right? We're seeing more and more men and women having to go to fertility experts and specialists just in order to conceive. And so one of the most common causes of unexplainable infertility issues in men and women is gluten. So you can see 
infertility both in men and women. In women, it can also lead to delayed menses or menarche. And that, so again, think of this in, in terms of your children. And maybe, maybe you're already an adult, but think of this. If you're gluten-free and you've got you know, minor children in your house that aren't but should be, how it could be impacting them not just in their, in their pubertal development, but also as, as it catches up with them in adulthood, the diseases that can be associated with that. So delayed menses, amenorrhea, early menopause. I see this a lot in women that think they're going through menopause. They end up changing their diet. They get the gluten out of their diet and then their cycle comes back for several years before they actually go through menopause. Again, so early menopause, side effect of gluten exposure recurrent abortions, and this is spontaneous abortion, so the body-induced abortion, and a reduced pregnancy rate. In men, it can cause hypogonadism and mature secondary sex characteristics. Now think about that in terms of, of what we're seeing today. There are a lot of things that are impacting uh, the mental health of, of our young men, but young men are becoming less manly, and many of them, you know, there are all types of new terms. I don't really wanna get into that whole LGBTQ thing but we're seeing a lot more impacted and some of this impact is in development it's in the way we're feeding our children the pesticides that we're exposing our children to and so again but immature secondary sex characteristics meaning they're not developing sexually and a reduce in semen quality so these things have all been studied the mechanisms are in debate and some of those mechanisms have to, to to do with malnutrition or at least it's thought they have to do with malnutrition we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute we also know one of the mechanisms is hyperprolactinemia prolactin is a hormone produced in the brain uh, and it's seen in 25 percent of people with celiac disease and this hormone elevation can cause impotence and loss of libido gluten withdrawal and correction of deficient uh, dietary elements can lead to a return of fertility both in men and women. So again, um, these are all findings, medical findings in, in the research. Now here's another study I wanted to point out, um, male gonadal function in celiac disease, and this was published in 1982. So again, this, is, this study is not new. This is this has been around for a long time, but in this particular study, 7% had clinical evidence of hypogonadism. So 7% of, of the celiac patients in this study all had uh, hypogonadism, but impotence and decreased sexual activity occurred more commonly, meaning that the smaller percentage of hypogonadism, but a greater percentage of impotence and decreased sexual activity. Okay, improving after gluten withdrawal and in the married group in this study, 19% had infertile miscarriages, a value greater than expected in the general population. The analysis of semen, so seminal analysis in celiacs revealed marked abnormalities of sperm morphology, meaning shape and motility, meaning capacity to swim robustly, but only the former appeared to improve after gluten withdrawal. So again, improvement after gluten withdrawal. Sperm motility was markedly reduced and two of the three celiacs with infertile miscarriages. So two out of three. So again, we know gluten has a major impact on sex, on the ability to have children. We know it has the uh, impact on the actual development sexually and, and the mature maturation. So the sexual development of both men and women, gluten can impact. Now beyond that, let's look at some of the reported symptoms in women. These are, these are all reported in a recent research study. Um, women with gluten sensitivity, 50% experienced some degree of sexual dysfunction. 61% had low sexual desire. 46% had arousal disorders. 39% had lubrication problems. 49% were unable to have an orgasm and 95% experience pain upon sexual intercourse. So this again, in a recent study published showing the symptoms of what women struggle with who have gluten issues. Now I put this diagram up here. This is a, 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 from a brand new publication here, just a, a, here recently in the last few months showing what, uh, this was a review study published, um, and what they were trying to illustrate is that these areas that you see here, these big areas are what are, what are called non, 
celiac or extra intestinal manifestations of gluten exposure, meaning these are ways that people can be impacted by gluten outside of the GI tract. So, you know, not, not the pain in the gut, not the diarrhea, not the gas, the bloating, the intestinal discomfort, but symptoms showing up in other locations of the body. So one of those was the endocrine system and specifically thyroiditis. And so what, what happens to women when women are diagnosed with, with Hashimoto's, oftentimes that diagnosis is associated with a series of different symptoms. And some of those symptoms have to do with sexual function. We know that hypothyroidism, women with hypothyroidism are tired. They generally have a lot more aches and pains, muscle aches and pains. They don't sleep as well. So how primed is a woman going to be to want to have sexual intercourse with her husband or significant other if she's battling and struggling with an endocrine disease induced by gluten, even outside of the GI tract? We know that there are skin disorders, uh, urticaria, um, alopecia, uh, we know psoriasis, rosacea, vasculitis. There are a number of different skin-based manifestations, and a lot of these are painful manifestations, meaning they hurt. So again, one of the, one of the hallmarks, I know this is maybe going to sound cliche, but fellas, if, if you're listening, you know, the, the old cliche excuse that a wife will give to not want to have sex, which is not tonight, honey, I have a headache, right? Not tonight, honey, I have, my skin hurts, right? My muscles ache because of my thyroid problem. I have nerve pain. You know, this is another manifestation of, uh, oops, where do we go here? Uh, another manifestation of gluten exposure is neuropathy. And so, you know, when you, when you have, again, skin inflammation, neurological inflammation, look at the symptoms. Not tonight, I have a headache, right? That migraine headaches are highly linked to gluten exposure. Look what else is linked. Depression, right? And this is another common symptom associated in those that, that do not want to, to, to engage in sexual activity. Anxiety. Um, what is this anxiety? So this is an increase in the, the sympathetic nervous system, right? So you think about where do we want to be with, you know, the, neurologically speaking for sex, we don't want to be here. Sympathetic is fight or flight. And when you're thinking about things that stress you out or that scare you, this is not the time that you want, you want to sit down and, and, and have a relationship with someone else. So you want to be in, in what's called parasympathetic nervous system tell. And this is, again, parasympathetic is sex, digestion, rest, right? This is the, the aspect of our autonomic nervous system where all these things are promoting and working better. Whereas if we're stuck here because we're creating neurological damage that's driving the anxiety process. We never get into this mode or we never effectively get here. And so it, it, again, it robs you of sexual vitality because it's taking you out of that nervous system mode where, where, where sex lives in essence, right? And so we also have uh, liver damage that can occur as a result of gluten exposure. So gluten-induced hepatitis, which think about that in terms of toxicity. If you're um, if your body's liver is struggling to detoxify, it, you know, you, you're trying to, every day you're exposed to toxins. Every day your, your body is being asked to deal and cope with environmental uh, toxins, food-based toxins, etc. And if your liver's being overwhelmed by your food choices, how well are you going to take out the trash? And if you're not taking out the trash very effectively, how much is, do you think that's going to impact your health in multiple ways? And then again, reproductive system. I mentioned we've mentioned this already, but infertility and sperm abnormalities in men. So again, this is these are all just ways that gluten has been shown to impact a person beyond the GI tract that are linked to your healthy and vital sex life. So you definitely want to look at gluten um, as something that you you want to take very very seriously if you want to have a serious sex life. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.